Hey guys and welcome to Heidi Gastro. In today's video, we will be talking about primary sclerosing cholangitis, which is also commonly known as PSC. So let's get started. So before we get into the specifics of PSC itself, let's do a quick review of what is the biliary system. So the biliary system is an elaborate system of coalescing channels or networks which serve to transport the bile from the liver to the small intestine, and more specifically, the duodenum. So if we take a closer look at this picture on my left, we see this large gray-eyed organ, which is actually the liver, and then we see all these little networks which coalesce or channels which come together, and these are all the biliary ducts or the bile ducts. So these ducts are very important because they serve to transport the bile from the liver into the intestine. And we see in this picture here, we see the ampulla of vata, which is actually the draining point. So the point at which this bile duct actually drains the bile into the intestine. So now that we know what the biliary system is all about, let's take a closer look at what is primary sclerosing cholangitis. So primary sclerosing cholangitis is a chronic liver disease, which is characterized by a progressive course of cholestasis with the inflammation and fibrosis of the intrahepatic and extrahepatic bile ducts. So all that fancy explanation really means is, if we take a closer look at this picture on my right, we see we have intrahepatic and extrahepatic bile ducts. So we have bile ducts which drain the liver and then bile ducts which carry the drained fluid or the bile into the intestine. So in patients who have primary sclerosing cholangitis, we have a fibrosis and the inflammation of the bile ducts. So a normal bile duct looks something like this, a sort of like a channel or a tunnel in which fluid can flow through becomes this, and we have inflammation, scar tissue, and destroyed ducts and cells. And if we look at this little speech bubble, it says cholestasis means a decrease in the bile flow. So every time we talk about cholestasis, chola meaning bile, and stasis meaning to be still or to not flow, it means we have a decrease in the bile flow. So of course in our normal bile ducts, our bile will be able to flow quite smoothly through these channels. But if we take a closer look down below, in patients who suffer from primary sclerosing cholangitis, we understand why they will suffer from cholestasis because that bile has such a hard time trying to pass through these various channels. So now let's talk about some signs and symptoms of primary sclerosing cholangitis. So the patients will suffer from fatigue, itching, pain in the upper right part of the abdomen, which is where the liver and the bowel system is located, fever, chills, night sweats, an enlarged liver, an enlarged spleen, weight loss, and yellowing of the eyes and the skin, which is called jaundice. So now that we know the basics of the disease and what the symptoms of the patients are, let's talk about what are the causes of primary sclerosing cholangitis. So the cause of PSC is currently unknown, but it does have links to inflammatory bowel disease, primarily ulcerative colitis and less often Crohn's disease. So about 75% of people who suffer from PSC also have ulcerative colitis. It is therefore thought that there may be an autoimmune component to the disease where the body's immune system attacks the bile ducts in the liver and causes them to become inflamed and narrowed. So if we take a closer look at this image, which shows us the frequency of PSC patients and other diseases, we see that there's a large portion of people who have PSC who also suffer from inflammatory bowel disease. So these patients can either have ulcerative colitis or Crohn's disease, but most commonly, we have PSC in association with ulcerative colitis. Now let's explore some complications of the disease. These patients can suffer liver failure. So due to their chronic inflammation of the bile ducts, this leads to tissue scarring and cirrhosis and cell death of the liver. So essentially, when all these channels become blocked, they begin to cause the liver to become sick and ill. And once that liver becomes chronically inflamed, it will start to scar and develop fibrous tissue. And that is how the liver failure sets in. So we will have liver cirrhosis, which means the scarring of the liver and essentially liver failure. These patients may also experience recurrent infections. So due to that cholestasis or bile stasis within these various channels, 
This can cause the patient to develop infections within the bile ducts. Another complication of this disease is bile duct cancer, so chronic inflammation of the bile ducts is also associated with an increased risk of developing cancer in the bile ducts or the gallbladder. And if you take a closer look at this image on my left, we see a cholangiocarcinoma developing, and that is due to the chronic inflammation within the bile ducts, and these cells become chronically inflamed, irritated, and they will eventually go on to developing cancer within the biliary system. So how can one go about diagnosing PSC? So the first thing we can do is a liver function blood test, and this will test the liver function by examining the levels of the liver enzymes. So usually in these patients, we'll have elevated liver enzymes. We can also do an MRI of the bile ducts, and this test uses magnetic resonance imaging to make images of the liver and bile ducts, and is usually the test of choice to diagnose this disease. So the most commonly used test to diagnose the PSC is actually the MRI of the bile ducts. So in this image here, we have an MRI which shows multiple bile duct strictures. So we can see those various points of narrowing within the biliary system. And that's how we can put a diagnosis of PSC. Continuing with diagnostic options, we can also do a bile duct x-ray, which is called the endoscopic retrograde cholangiopancreatography or ERCP, and this makes the bile ducts visible on an x-ray. Here, the physician will use a flexible tube passed down into the esophagus to inject a dye into the area of the small intestine where the bile ducts are. So as you can see, we insert this little endoscopic tube into a part of the duodenum where the ampulla of vata is. So as we said, the ampulla of vata is that point at which the bile duct actually enters the small intestine. So we release a dye there and it's able to dye and stain the biliary system. And if those channels are clean and neat and smooth, then we know we don't have a case of PSC. But if they have multiple spots of thinning, narrowing, and then larger parts or inflamed parts, then we can diagnose a PSC. And in this specific ERCP case, we can see stenosis and a beaded appearance. We can also do a liver biopsy, and this helps determine the extent of damage to the liver. Because as we said, these patients will have a chronic liver inflammation, and they will have scarring and tissue damage of the liver. So how can one go about treating primary sclerosing cholangitis? So the treatment of the disease includes medications to reduce itching and jaundice. Antibiotics can be used to treat the infections, and vitamin supplements can be used since most people with PSC are often deficient in vitamins A, D, and K. In some cases, surgery to open major blockages in the common bile duct may also be necessary, and in addition, liver transplantation may be required, and in some cases, can cure PSC completely. And that brings us to the end of this video on primary sclerosing cholangitis. Thank you guys so much for watching. Please make sure to like, comment, subscribe, and share. Hope you found the presentation very interesting and informative. If you'd like to download a copy of the presentation, please make sure to click the link in the description. Take care and bye for now.